I'm thinking about a few things tonight. One of the first ones is death. Not a pleasant subject, but I'm trying to do a search for truth. And sometimes, I mean, death is certainly true. We all die. What happens after that? Different opinions, but and no one disputes that we're going to die. So it's a fact. I re I'm, going, I'm 71, and I remember when I was in my 20s, well, there were, there were people my age dying in Vietnam, and uh, someone I knew in school enlisted and eventually came back minus an arm. And I remember, like, if I heard someone passed away and they were in their 60s, not that I felt unkind, but I thought, well, that's too bad, but they had their life. They were 60s, like, wow. You know, and now it's, uh, I'm in my 70s, and I feel, I don't know, I... I but, you know, the body changes, you know, I don't, I'm not, I can't go jog around the block like I was in my 20s, but mentally or my personality, I don't feel much different than I was 20 or 30 years ago. I mean, I've changed some opinions, I've read some books, I've forgotten some things, I have a different profession, but essentially I feel like, you know, I'm the same person. I don't know. It's odd that what I was taught about Catholic school about what happened after death. It was very strange. I couldn't have formulated, formulated this all at the time, but there were things that bothered me. Uh, one thing which I mentioned before was that I was in grade school in the 50s and early 60s, and this was before Vatican II, and I was taught old school Catholicism. If you didn't have a Catholic baptism, you weren't getting into heaven, period. End of story. At least that's the way I was taught. And a mortal sin could get you in hell. So if you committed a mortal sin and you didn't get it forgiven by a priest, and there's some also nuances, if a priest wasn't available when you felt sincere contrition, etc. But the point was, there was the possibility you could die and go to hell forever. We were told. If you committed a mortal sin, and so in other words, if you eating at that time eating meat on friday was a mortal sin so supposedly if you intentionally in full knowledge that it was friday ate the hot dog and said i'll go to confession tomorrow and say you're eight nine ten years old well you die in the meantime like in your sleep not good and that seemed i don't know both of those things seemed like if those were true that would kind of make god mean wouldn't it i mean okay and another thing was, they didn't even seem to believe it themselves, in a way. I mean, I mean the priests and nuns, and, and the, the people. I mean, for instance, if a neighbor died and he was known just to go to Mass, like, for Christmas, no one, you know, suppose he died suddenly, no one said, gee, I hope, I really hope, you know, George isn't going to hell. No one seemed worried. And... When I was in fourth or fifth grade, a boy in my school died of appendicitis. I didn't know him personally. I might have recognized his name. So he died of appendicitis. And the nuns and even the priests came in at one point to assure us he was in heaven. But how could they know that? I mean, they were trying to assure us, don't worry. But it was like, how could they know he's not in heaven? If what they taught was true, not not true. If what they taught was fully believed, they'd be worried. Now, maybe you might say, well, they were worried, but they didn't want to show it to the children. Yeah, maybe, but I don't, I don't think so. I, I don't th maybe some of them were. I mean, yeah, maybe some of the nuns really worried. But it just seemed very hard to believe. And it seemed like, was it a way to tell kids don't ask questions, teach them something, and teach it as sacred? Like, you've got to believe this. So either you believe it or you don't, but you're afraid to tell anyone. So is, is it that what it is? I mean, and then this brings me to the idea of faith. If God wanted me to know something, why would he give me bad evidence? You know, like Bible believers, you open up the Bible, the first thing you see is a talking serpent. Now, whether that's true or not, why would God put a talking serpent in a book 
that he wanted us to believe and then say, well, you've got to take it on faith. I'm not going to give you good evidence. That that's my word. I mean, that would be, okay, so first of all, about the health thing, seems like that's kind of a vicious God. I mean, come on, a kid eating a hot dog, being tortured forever. And then the face thing seems like almost, like there's no God. I mean, like, we don't have good evidence because there is none. But if there was, like, why wouldn't God just, now I know the argument is free will. The argument is, well, if God revealed himself, we'd have to believe, and that would somehow violate our free will. I've heard that. But an answer, and this is an original, I've heard this is an answer. Didn't the devil and his angels absolutely know God existed? Yes. But they revolted anyway. They had free will, and that didn't stop them from revolting. And another thing is, let's suppose it was just like, suppose the whole entire world believed one God, you know, the same God. That would make it a little more credible. But you've got these things where you see so many gods, and if you read the little I've read of history, like when explorers went to these remote islands, when they started exploring the world, I think Europe was going all over the world in the, what, 1600s, 1700s? Well, no, Columbus discovered America 1492. After that, Europe was discovering the whole world. I think in many, 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 many places, they would find people had their gods, that they had, well, the Europeans would have to have thought the gods were invented. They wouldn't have thought that the native people's gods was the genuine god. At least I don't expect they would. And so it's just, just odd. Now, I don't know if I'm tying this together. This is where I just felt like I wanted to say something, but I didn't plan it ahead. And I've spoken about death, and I've spoken about faith. I want to pause a second and see what happens. Okay, I'm back. By the way, that is a time discontinuity we made just made a jump in time uh, i'm teaching a calc one uh, one of my courses and we just covered continuity today we just began continuity neither here nor there from what i just said about faith i do find it hard to believe that people really accept this that people will say the bible says with total conviction the bible is the word of god but I had an interesting thing happen to me once. I was with a group of people, and uh, this woman had recently been to India for uh, a week, a month, whatever, I don't know. And she was an artist. And we were talking, and someone said, what did you like most about India? And the woman who was an artist said, the lack of, angular, the lack of angularity. And you can imagine what everybody said. What? Well, she's an artist. She's very visual. And she lived in San Francisco. And well, in any city, you've got right angles. You've got the flat pavement and the perpendicular building. You've got hard jet edges. The building has a flat wall. Um, edges. Flatness. Whereas, I guess she was in a village or some rural area in India, where's foliage, where you walk down a path that winds. It's not perfectly straight and it's not covered with asphalt where it is, I, I suppose there was animals, you know, like you'd see more animals, birds or whatever. Okay, so she said that. And people were talking, and this other woman said, you are really visual, to the first woman. And the first woman said, yeah, I guess I am. And then the second woman said, well, I'm not visual at all. And she told the story. Uh, she was going out with a guy for a while. And one night, she was in the car with him, and he was getting more and more upset. She didn't know why. And she said... What's the matter with you? Why are you getting upset? And he said, did you notice? Didn't you notice? She said, notice what? He said, I shaved off my beard. So the point was, here were two people. One was oppressed by the angularity of a city, and the other one didn't even notice her boyfriend had shaved off his beard. She said she was very individual. So the point is, I guess, is I feel one way, but... There are people I don't understand, but I, I know they exist that, uh, well, like a suicide bomber, like, okay, they, they, they've got to believe what they, what they, you know, and what they do because they're killing themselves. I mean, uh, they're not doing it for the money probably. Okay. I'm back again. This is free form tonight. I didn't write it out, but I think these thoughts tie together. So the next thing I wanted to say was that, uh, 
I'm probably offending people, okay, from what I'm saying. But I'm, I'm just trying to tell what I believe. And no one has to listen to this. I'm not going door to door, right? And another thing is religious people, I mean, some of them, a lot of them are very nice and very circumspect, if that's the right word. But some of them, I mean, what was it? Westboro Baptist Church, I think. They had signs, something like, thank God for dead soldiers or something. And they, I guess they had their reasons. I don't know. I never looked into it. But the point was, oh, they're a religion. So I think they got more respect. Well, the point is, I would, at least, I would like at least half of that respect. That's, that's basically what I'm saying. I'm telling you what I believe. Jehovah Witnesses do that, but they come and knock on your door. I'm not doing that. A lot of churches have much more extreme beliefs than I think I'm saying. Anyway, I guess that's all I'm going to say. I hope these death, faith, and this subject kind of hang together. Thanks.